Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I cannot find so much as a cloud in the sky today, no matter which direction I look. Not a single cloud. Unusual, <laughs> as that may be for out here, but not a single cloud. So yeah, just keep vacillating between one extreme to the other out here. Uh, I can't say anything looks normal on any given day. Uh, this is very unusual. And not but a few days ago, I couldn't even hardly catch a watt off of any of my solar panels. So yeah, which leads me into today's video. I wanted to talk to you guys and show you how the difference one battery and two solar panels has made for all of the systems that I have for getting through those darkest of dark days. Of course, today, the sun is charging everything up just beautifully. But let's jump into the house and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because out of all the systems I run, I added one more as I showed you guys, and wow, yeah, made a difference. So I have currently five systems inside the home, and I've got two on this wall, and the first one is that 24 volt system, as you can see right there, and it's being powered by that Time USB battery and a Phoenix 24375. I primarily use that system uh, as a backup in case one of my other systems needs to be kind of charged back up. And then I've got this second system on the same wall. And this one is currently running a five cubic foot freezer 24-7. And right now it's at about 70% full and looking really good. And I haven't had to move any power around there at all. So two out of the five are on this wall. And for the past couple of years, at least, I've used that 24 volt only as a backup when needed. And that inverter will run anything uh, essential in the house as a backup, except for my high wattage devices in the kitchen. So refrigerator, uh, freezer, one or the other at a time, it'll easily run that. The third system is on a different wall. And this is that Vatterer 100 amp hour, 48 volt battery, 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this primarily runs all the high wattage devices in the kitchen. And you can see it's at 82%, doing great on its way to probably near 100% full today. And here's system number four, 200 amp hour, 12.8 volt, another time USB. Again, you see my Victron components, MPPT 7515. And a Phoenix 12 375 and again this runs everything that I would need in the bedroom big screen TV lights charging various devices etc and this is the fifth system which is in the back of the house and of course this was my original system when I went from lead acid to lithium iron phosphate batteries they're still the original chins I started with haven't changed this at all since, you know, I got it up to this point. Of course, it did grow as I was adding different things over the the years, or the, especially the first couple of years. But now it's pretty much intact. 1,000 watts of solar coming in. It's sitting at 84% full right now. Of course, we're getting great sun. So I've explained to you guys over the years how I ended up with so many systems. That wasn't my initial plan. It's just how it grew as I was getting sent batteries for reviews. I'd build a little system around it, 
implement it to what worked best for my lifestyle. And so systems kept growing and growing. And I've largely got by with those five systems. Uh, the newest one being that 48 volt from Vatterer. That's only been in about the past year that that was brought in here. And that really changed the game for high, high wattage devices in the kitchen, which I really wasn't doing too much of at that time beforehand. But even on the darkest of dark stretches that I can get out here, there's a few times where, you know, I really have to jockey power around, you know, unplug a device from a system that's pretty well drained, let another one that's been catching better sun, depending where the panels are located. You know, I've got some here, I've got some in the back as well, and they do catch different amounts of sun you know, depending what time of year it is. So that's kind of how the whole multi-system grew here. And it's worked extremely well. I mean, just a couple of months ago, I think it was, I was showing you guys that, you know, I ran into such a long dark spell. I actually did have to fire up a generator for the first time in years to top off a couple of batteries. And I only had to do that for one day and then the sun popped back out. But yeah, but the point of today's video is I've added one more battery and two more panels. And I'm gonna show you how big of a difference that has made. So right there are the two solar panels. Those are both bifacials. They're not in a great location to harness the bifacial uh, you know, qualities of it. I just plop them up there like that to get a battery up and charged, a brand new battery that I bought. Uh, that's 430 watts a piece, so 860 watts available under that kind of sun right there, which is full sun. And then I showed you guys a while back, I bought this Lee Time 51.2 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And that's what those 860 watts worth of solar are going into. This was a huge game changer. So my sixth system now tied into this house and I am not having to jockey anything around. So I have that lead time dedicated to running a 21 cubic foot refrigerator freezer 24 seven. And it has been since the day I got that fully charged. And that refrigerator freezer and then that five cubic freezer are the only devices that are truly running 24 seven. So it's essential I keep both of those running. Now that 300 amp hour Red Odo in that first room I showed you running that freezer is having no problem keeping up with that. It currently has 400 watts of solar tied into it and it's doing just fine, even in those darker days. And then the chins in the back I used to basically run that refrigerator freezer off of all the time. And it would keep up as long as the sun kept coming out. But in the darker days, it could drain down, you know, after a week of darkness. And I'd have to go to one of the backup systems. And I've showed you how I do that many times. And here's what I really wanted to show you about that 48 volt system. Here you can see it's only getting 109 watts, but that's because we're in absorption, as you can see, holding it at 56.8, pretty much just rock steady, looking great. And if we look for the past couple of days, you can see I've gone into absorption. Uh, that's because no clouds, basically, past couple days. You can see that the solar panels are overproducing what they're rated at. There's a 960 and 960. You know, when the sun comes out, it goes over the 860 that they're rated for. So, but it's back in these darker days that made the difference because, you know, 100% full now, yesterday, close enough, previous week, basically. But if we go back to a full week ago, you can see, I mean, 200 watt hours, 170 watt hours. This is where this battery really made the difference for 
you know, keeping that refrigerator freezer running really, really good, you know. And then before then, pretty dark. Especially that, this stretch right here, very dark, you know. But on these days when I would wake up, I mean, that battery, per the app that that battery has on that, the lowest I ever saw was like 78%. So it never, it never missed a beat. And then the minute the sun does peak out with 860 watts available for one battery, man, I just get into great shape real, real quick. And you can see, I'll let you guys just look at those values. I mean, there's no problems whatsoever. And my goodness, I mean, look at yesterday, 2.66 kilowatt hours. I, that is so fantastic. I believe that was the most... I've ever pumped into that battery in one day since I tied it up but yeah I mean you can see even on what I would consider some mediocre days you know I'm 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 cranking the power in there 1.72 1.79 yeah just fantastic and that is running that refrigerator freezer 24 seven. Now, to be fair, the nights have been cooler as well. So that refrigerator freezer has not been running quite as hard, but that has really taken the pressure off of all the other systems. Now, if I was to start completely over, if I was starting fresh, moving off grid, would I build, you know, six different systems? No, I wouldn't. I would probably build two systems for sure. And they'd both be 48 volts. You know, I mean, now that I've got the experience behind me running those 48 volts, which I've taken you guys along for the ride. You know, I grew up on 12 volts and I was happy with the 12 volts. I still am. They work very, very well and they work great for my purposes out here. But if I was just moving into a new place or starting from scratch, you know, I would get two 48 volt systems, probably a couple hundred amp hours in each system. And I think I would always have a backup in case one system failed, which I think that is important. I really like the idea of always having a backup and then instead of like multiple small backups, which has worked for my purposes. But yeah, if I was just starting off you know, I would go with 48 volt. Uh, it's, it's more efficient, as you guys know. Charges up faster, discharges slower. You can run all your high wattage devices, uh, which I have very few of those. And that's why I just need one 100 amp hour for the kitchen side of the things. Because everything else, I don't have anything else that really is that high wattage. I mean, that refrigerator freezer, when it's uh, running 70-ish watts, basically, uh, except when it does kick into defrost mode, and it's a couple hundred watts when it does that for 20 minutes every 24 hours. So, it's again, it's not really taxing the system. But it's the fact that it runs 24 hours a day, and then if I get a week of absolute zero sun or thereabouts, uh, yeah, that 48 volt system has made a huge difference so now i'm sitting with you know everything basically full and the other thing i wanted to say was you know about having enough panels to drive a battery like that so you know in the beginning i was showing you guys i was adding all these 100 watt panels i like them uh, because they were so light and easy to carry around and i do like them for that but there's a lot to be said for having a, a nice size panel that when the sun hits it can be cranking out you know near a thousand watts into one battery because that gets that battery up and running and then if i don't see the sun for several days like i showed you guys that battery's in still in good shape and the minute the sun hits it it's going to get charged right back up again and i still do not see a single cloud in the sky so yeah, one, one extreme to the other, because if I'm not getting sun, I'm usually getting rain. 
And if I'm not getting rain, I'm usually getting at least adequate sun. So yeah, thought you guys might find that interesting. You know, I was thinking about that and it's like, wow, one battery and two solar panels really made a very nice difference. And I don't mind having these systems because it was kind of built organically over the years, you know, like I've showed you guys. I wouldn't have gone out and done that just on my own, but that's kind of how the channel developed. And uh, I always wanted to build a little system around any battery that was sent out to me. So glad I did that actually. But yeah, so now I'll call it six systems <laughs> and uh, doing quite well, doing quite well. So yeah, no matter where we live, uh, the weather is unpredictable at best, right? So yeah, it takes a long time to you know, get the feel for your environment. When I first came out here and drove halfway across the island to find some solar equipment, it was not that easy years and years ago. And I found a little distributor, like I said, halfway across the island. And when I told him where I lived, he goes, oh, that's not such a great solar environment. And I know what he meant because then, uh, that many years ago, I never, ever saw days like this, never. They were always cloudy, overcast, rainy. It wasn't unusual for us to get uh, an inch a day. And I know people that are in agriculture that depended upon that kind of moisture. Well, those days have changed. And we don't get it like that now. I mean, the other day when it was raining, I mean, it was coming down three inches an hour and I showed you guys that. Uh, so, uh, that quickly fills up the water systems, but, and then days like this quickly fill up the solar, but roll of the dice, you just never know what you're going to get anymore. So yeah, uh, I'll never forget that. When I told that guy where I lived, oh, he goes, you're not going to get much sun up there. And I thought, well, I'll probably get enough for myself. And I did, but uh, yeah, now... You just never know. So, like I say, organically, these systems come along. The longer you live anywhere you live, you know what your power needs are. You add power devices. You change your lifestyle a little bit. You just have to make these adjustments along the way. But I'm going to be so bold as to say that one battery and two solar panels has changed things out here considerably. All right, you guys. Just checking in. That was what was on my mind today. Hope you're getting what you guys need wherever you are. Aloha, everybody. I'll catch you guys on the next one.